right, Fred, it's been a while. What do you have in store for D-Lab's basic training session? Oh, boy. Well, looks like little Fink's been busy. I think he's building a rat nest. All right, let's get to the good stuff. So today we have a Class A amplifier. The reported problem, low distorted output. The design is close to that of a Fender 5F2. So, as we go through this, you guys got to ask yourself the three questions. Number one, is it a bad output tube? Is it a power supply issue? Or is it a bad connection? So what we're going to do is a unpowered visual inspection. Then we'll power up the amp, obviously listen to it. And if we have to, we'll measure some voltage and try to narrow down this problem using some Ohm's Law. All right, so here is the amplifier that we're going to be troubleshooting. As I stated, it is very similar to the design of a Fender 5F2. The only difference on this model is the rectifier tube is a 6X5 rather than a 5Y3. The rest of the circuitry is almost identical, so you can follow along on your 5F2 schematic while we're troubleshooting this problem. So it's always a good idea when you're troubleshooting these problems, especially if this was a fresh build, to go through and verify all of your wiring. Make sure that your ground points are connected. Many times these amps have came into my shop, the power supply ground is connected, but the preamp ground is not. All that appears normal in this amp. All right, we have completed our unpowered visual inspection and didn't see anything that looked out of place or maybe would cause a hazard to apply power. So I have powered up the amplifier and now we are going to listen to the actual problem. This is tone. This is volume. I'm using this little nano looper as an input so we can listen to the amp. Here we go. That's half volume. There's full volume. So it's trying to process audio, but for some reason we have a high level of distortion and very low output. My tubes are all warm. The 6V6 is warm, but look, I can hold my hand on that tube. I've had this on for about five minutes. Have any of you ever grabbed a 6V6 tube after it's been on for five minutes? Yeah, let's take a look underneath. All right, our next phase of troubleshooting, we are gonna measure tube voltages, okay? We know that the amp is trying to produce audio, but is highly distorted and low volume. So the first thing I would do is take a look at the voltages on that 6V6 tube, all right? So our plate voltage is on pin three, which is there. I've got about 390 volts there. And then we have the screen voltage. Now, this type of symptom would make me think that we've lost screen voltage and we're simply feeding the triode with the plate. Let's see. No, screen voltage is good. Now we know that the filament voltage is good because the tube filaments are on. All right, so that leaves one thing and that would be the cathode voltage. As I'm checking these voltages, there should be very close to what you guys see online for your 5F2. All right, here is the cathode voltage. We've got about 61 volts, okay? Now, I have a different bias resistor in mine than you would have on your typical champ. So a champ would normally be a 470 ohm resistor. Mine has a 680. So for the fun of it, let's go ahead and say we've got 61 volts. We're going to divide that by 680 ohms. That says I have 89 milliamps of current going through that 6V6. So you remember when we were topside and I touched that tube and I said, man, it's warm, but it ain't hot. If I had 89 milliamps, guys, I think you'd be taking the flesh off of my finger. I'm touching it again nothing okay the typical current through that tube should be around say 40 milliamps so we're almost more than double the current 
that it would expect to see. But is that really the case? So, remember our list of things that it could be. Is it the 6v6? Could be. Maybe that 6v6 is open, not conducting current. Is it a power supply issue? Well, I don't think so because we just checked the power supplies. Is it a bad connection? That could be what it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our meter, we're going to go right across that bias resistor and see what the voltage is. So I've moved the meter leads. My negative now is on the bottom side of the bias resistor. My positive is going to go to the top side. Now remember, we just measured 60 volts. Let's see what we have. What do we got, guys? zero volts across that resistor. Now if you do your basic ohm law, if we had 89 milliamps of current going through that resistor, we'd probably have a voltage drop. We have no voltage drop. So either this resistor is open or we've lost our path to ground. Let's check that. All right, the amplifier is off, unplugged, and I verified that the power supplies were dead. So now we're going to check my bias resistor. My negative lead is still where it was at before. I've switched over to ohms. Let's see what we got. 670 ohms. That resistor is not open. So the only way that we could be losing current flow is the negative lead is not going to ground. So let's see. No. So if you look at your schematic, you'll see that the bottom side of your bias resistor and the bypass cap should both be going to ground. Let's see if the bypass cap is going to ground. Yes, it is. So for some reason, we have lost the ground connection to our bias resistor. And that is why you saw the high voltage here. There is an old rule, guys. It's called zero across to short, applied across and open. Since the circuit is open, that is voltage leaking through the cathode, and you're just seeing this voltage making it appear as though there's current through that resistor. But in reality, there's not. So let's take a real close look at the connection on the low side of the 680 ohm resistor. So let's take a good look at these solder connections. We know that the capacitor has a good path to ground, whereas the resistor does not. This connection looks great, nice and shiny. This one, there is a little bit of brown residue, a lot of rosin. So there is a capacitor here that shares that connection, it's fine. But this guy is not so good. You see that? It's not broken loose, but it's not moving either. So what we have here is what they call a rosin connection. The heat was transferred enough to solder this guy in but the rosin pooled around that lead and broke the ground connection on that resistor. And I see this quite often on ILEP boards. So even though this is a D-Lab ECBA board, it is still an ILEP design and the same problems can happen. And yes, I did sabotage this so that I could demonstrate this problem for all of you. So what we're going to do now is resolder this connection and test the amp. Here we go. Fix up that connection. And then we'll retest with a meter. Make sure that's grounded. It sure is. I bet you this amp will act much differently here in a second. All right, we're powered back up. So first off, let's see if we have good audio output. Volume is here. That's only half volume. So obviously, the circuit is happy once again. Let's measure our voltage now on that resistor. So let's say we have 21 volts. So 21 divided by our 680 ohm resistor, I've got about 31 milliamps idle, class A. 
and it sounds great. So yes, I did have to sabotage the amp, but I wanted you guys to see this situation because it happens quite often. So how fun was that? A little Class A sabotage here at D-Lab Electronics. I'm trying to give you guys a common sense approach, a way that you can find these issues without having to have a whole shop full of equipment. If you like what I'm doing, please tell your friends. Please subscribe. I'm trying to grow the shop. So thank you Fred and Fink and all of you for tuning in. There will be more D-Lab basic training on the way. Thank <laughs> you.